Do you know why they're called 100 Thieves? God. Are you ready for this? No, go on. It's because <clears throat> they've just stolen a strategy off of Tempo Storm. Oh my God, there it is. There we go. So they've got like, they've probably stolen a couple of other concepts over the years. So they're probably at like, we've got 96 more Thieves to discover before mm. the prophecy is fulfilled and then Nature can just I don't know, crumble into dust and just float into areas. Life is complete at that point. But uh, I, that was actually off the cuff. That was not a bad pl- bad joke it was that was planned. It was just it was a bad joke cuff, that yeah. came within the moment. It was bad, but like because it came in the moment, <laughs> it maybe isn't quite as bad. You know what I mean? It's actually yeah, quite impressive. If, if, like, I wouldn't I have been able to do that. For that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my <laughs> head would have just exploded as opposed to come up with a, with a good one like that. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, this video is all Making about a game. Thieves making a game which working title Project X, yeah. which is thieving a film title, right? So now we're on what, 95? There's 95 <laughs> Thieves to go, yeah. yeah. And um, <laughs> the thing, the thing, the, the weird thing initially is they've announced it, but they have no idea what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. But that's actually the good thing as well. Because which is exciting as well, yeah. They're building, they're doing the whole building in public thing, which I think obviously is a huge thing among like startups right now. Mm-hmm. Especially well, on like startup Twitter at least, which I frequent more than I care to admit. But like they've been <laughs> on about building in public since like the pandemic started effectively. Mm. Where you just show the highs and lows of stuff. Yeah. As you go along before you've actually got anything fucking tangible. Yeah. As a means of having an audience when your project launches, which is great because yeah, if you look yeah. at like Apex Legends, which was huge, but they had to do, I'm pretty sure they paid like Ninja like a million and a bunch of other like big influencers at the time, like money to play the game as it came out. And yeah. the only information Remember prior that. to its launch was like, oh, there's a Titanfall spin-off Battle Royale thing coming soon in like mm-hmm. two weeks from a leak account. And that was about it. So like mm-hmm. they had, they went for like the Beyonce album drop thing where it's like, boom, there you go as an album. But it's like, they're not Beyonce, <laughs> so they don't yeah, have that yeah. track record, and not everyone knew to be excited for it. Exactly. Whereas the building in public stuff, like Hundred Thieves, at this point, say their game comes out in like 2027, if it even does ever come out, that's like a long runway of being able to build anticipation, make people feel like they're involved in some way. You know? Yeah, that's one of the things I quite like about Hundred Thieves. To be honest, is you know how everybody now in any field is everybody knows that oh content or oh, personal brand or. Oh, the branding of a company is really important. So everyone is trying to force out this content. I've seen it like from a lot of different people. You know, Ben Francis, the guy that runs Gymshark. Yes, yes. He, yes. Um, like, I've just, I don't know. He, I mean, it might not be, but it seems very stiff when I watch it. And it's like, your strategy is to make content, which kind of pisses me off. Like, I know that it's the smart strategy, uh-huh. but for some people, it just comes easier than, other, than others. And for some people, it just feels forced. And I hate that everyone is fucking doing it because they know it's the thing to do. Like, oh, let's look authentic even without being authentic. Not to say, I mean, yeah, not to dump on them too much, but like the reason I was saying that is because 100 Thieves, like, I don't know, it just feels natural. Like, Nature is an actual, like, legendary content creator. And that's because he's come at it like the other way around, whereas Ben Francis yeah. was firmly not a personality (laughs) prior it's just a geezer who's like lift weights feel good which i respect fair play g yeah Uh, and and then from there like he's not the ceo anymore is he he's like he's basically like an ambassador effectively but yeah is he the chairman or something i can't something like that but it's the same thing i can tell he just goes around going jim shark a sick yeah look at this and you know you know like people who just do it and do it well like for example stephen bartlett just got an amazing personal brand now do you not like him? Yeah, not at all. I see. Um, I, I quite like him. I don't. I, I listen to his podcast and shit. But he is. He's a good example of someone that just did it and did it really well. It's worked. Because you him. are seeing this. Yeah, it's worked for it massively now. But you are seeing this this wave of yeah people just just fucking forcing it. But like, part of me thinks like, what does he actually fucking do work wise? Um, do Stephen Bartlett? Know, yeah, no, I don't just, think he's got anything to do with social chain anymore, is it? No, 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 no. But like, no. even even that, uh, I don't know. I know I know a couple of people who used to work there, so I think maybe that like tarnished my opinion of him before I ever saw any of his stuff. But oh, like, I did used did, to yeah. back in the day. I was a little Gary V obsessed fucker back when I was trying to like get going in writing and like building my own website and stuff. I would watch mm-hmm. the Gary V stuff. You got content, man, content, <laughs> content, all the time. And then, and then um, there was like the UK version, which was effectively Stephen Bartlett, right? And he had this ginger 
little ginger fella called Dodds editing for him and stuff like that. And that was like his D rock. And it all felt very much yeah. similar. And it was just like, here I am. I'm flying to Jamaica today to go and close the deal. And it's like, yeah, sick, mate. Like, this is, yeah, whatever. So mm. when I grew up, effectively, I, I decided, yeah, this is objectively shit. Um, yeah. And I, I, I tried a couple of his podcasts since, but not for me. But again, like, I think he's another one where I don't think he's like a natural creator mm. by any means, in fact. But then again, if you look at like Nature when he first started streaming and creating content, he was an awkward fucker as well. Like, mad <laughs> awkward, in fact, to be fair. Mm. So. I don't know what it is, but like he, well, yeah, he came up on the creator side first and then like pivoted into business and mm. which is a good way of doing things though, obviously. Yeah. I just you feel like you almost people... don't plan those things. I don't think you, oh, you know what? I'm going to get like 10 million subscribers first, then I'll launch my business. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't. That's why, that's why people love nature shots because it's all authentic. Yeah. I think, yeah, some people, for some people it works. For some people, it really does just look fast and, with the hundred thieves stuff, like everything they're doing feels authentic, and they're also make, making pretty good decisions. It seems like um, seemingly so. So that like they raised sixty mil in their Series C in December twenty twenty one, which is mm-hmm. something I actually forgot about in a couple of episodes ago when I said no one's raising big money anymore. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, hundred thieves is, but at that point, I remember there was a quote from Nate Shot, which probably actually wasn't <clears throat> said by him, but the PR person wrote for him. But um, says something like, we're now able to create and acquire new companies that you wouldn't expect, something along those lines. Mm. So like, it's very clear with like the acquisition of high ground that they made, where you wouldn't necessarily expect them to do it, though it makes sense as an extension of who they are. This again, yeah. like you would never expect it, I don't think, because they're on the other side of the food chain here. They're the ones getting shafted by developers and publishers. It shouldn't be <laughs> them mm. becoming one and saying, fuck you, we've got the power then. But yeah, I, yeah. I, again, like, I, so I guess this is part of that. And I imagine it will take a lot of that 60 mil to truly get something off of the ground because you've got to all the big game, hires yeah. to make first. And then I don't even know what else will go into it, but all of the planning and mm. uh, the, the part of the reason I think it's such a high risk, high reward situation is because there's n- nothing's guaranteed at the end. Mm. There's no guarantee they're going to have a tangible product <laughs> at any yeah. point or they're going to launch a product. Never mind it be successful or not. There are so many things that could come in where they actually, it never gets off of the ground. Yeah. You know I, mean? I don't, I don't know how much you really need to develop a game. And I guess it depends on how big they want to go. You know, if they're trying to develop the next fucking call of duty and like this beautiful, massive um, thing that presumably costs might cost hundred million or something. I don't, I have no idea to be honest. Or Some, if like the, AAA title or a little mobile yeah. That's exactly, yeah. I mean, I feel like it'll be big, whatever they choose to do. But will it be like a... Yeah. I think the fact that they've left themselves open is pretty cool. And it's exciting. Like, And the more I think about it, and we can get into this now if you want, like being able to leverage creators and teams that they have. Mm-hmm. And they do have some of the biggest. Like, that's cool. Like, I, I'm interested to see what they do with it. Um, I, I, there's valuable feedback in that they can say like what makes games good to them and what do their fans want to see and those kind of things like they can make really like informed decisions mm-hmm. at that point I feel but I think there's inherently a risk if you include say the Call of Duty team for example right say they're making mm-hmm. an FPS and they're saying okay we're going to tap our FPS players from Valorant and, and COD like what are the chances those players <laughs> stick around at all by the time the game's out, right? And if they're saying, I don't know how far they're going to go with like the creator player led stuff, but a smart move seemingly would be tying the game to 100 Thieves as much as possible. And that could include having Courage as a character in game and yeah. having Kenny from uh, LA Thieves in the game and all these kind of things. Like the live cycle or like the amount of time that a player stays with a competitive team. Mm. Is minimal. Like they can sometimes they'll play two games and then get dropped and oh, it didn't work out. Sometimes they'll be there for a couple of years. You get the very rare ones where like it's scumper optic where he's there besides a minor blip of like 14 days where he's there for like 10 years. Mm. Like you have to be very careful, I feel, around the people you choose to build yeah, it's something true, yeah, around, because... especially a game. <laughs> because that's how because it's to change. What happens if there's a fallout? Yeah, you make a good point. Like 
yeah, if if Courage leaves, gets a bit be- a better offer from from another org, and then he, but he's a character in this Hundred Thieves game. Mm. It's like what happens then? It's just a bit awkward, isn't it? Yeah, I, I feel like basing too much of the game off of factors that could change very quickly. Yeah, yeah, is a worrying thing. If it's like a if it's like a little puzzly kind of game where you're a robber, you're a thief, and you have to go storm the cash app compound, and mm. that's like you know that's a uh, a building they're likely going to have for many years you would assume that's their headquarters like that seems safe to put in the game in my mm. mind yeah, like yeah. tie stuff together that way and you can have the sponsor integration at that point which is additional uh, additional profits potentially or as at least bonus exposure and stuff for the people that uh, sorry for the companies that pay to to partner with 100 thieves mm-hmm. but if you go as far as <laughs> including like I don't know, like the minutiae of the players. I don't, I don't know if, say, like some of their Fortnite players and stuff. Like, there's no telling where Fortnite's going to be in three years. Never mind this player. I, f- I feel like that's True. a bit of a risk. So I understand tapping their knowledge. Like these people play professionally. Like they know what makes a game good or what makes a game not so good. So that makes a lot mm. of sense to me. And using creators like Courage and Valkyrie makes some sense. Like they're literally bought in at this point. They have equity. They're not going to want to leave because Hundred Thieves is bigger than. 100 Thieves is bigger than what Courage is. Valkyrie, arguable. But like, mm-hmm. it makes sense to stay attached to something like that. Yeah, it does, yeah. Especially, like you said, if they've got equity. Um, Which should probably be like yeah. 1%. But I mean, it's... Or maybe yeah. half a percent. But, it's still but I mean, with the value of 100 Thieves, that could be huge. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, the, I was thinking the same thing. Using um, Valkyrie... And courage is like the the obvious one, and also just being able to use the teams and the content creators to promote the game when it gets launched is so big. Because yeah, I don't know what their um, following is collectively as an org. You know, using all of the people that are associated with the brand, but it must be like tens of millions. I mean, it might even be hundreds of millions. It probably will be because they've got like the two hype group and. Uh, a bunch of others that like aren't necessarily there day to day in their key promo stuff, mm. but like you were definitely there. So yeah, there's a, a lot of eyeballs yeah. there. And, and if you're if you're sharing updates, say on like a weekly or monthly basis for like four years on the lead up to a game, which then looks good, like the people that are followed along at that point are not only going to be so invested in how this game turns out if they like the sound of it, they're also going to be mad invested in Hundred Thieves as a whole because mm-hmm. they've been on that journey with them this whole time. Yeah. And like the fandom area of esports is something obviously we discussed in a in a past video, but is something like that crucially needs to be built upon. Mm-hmm. Not not only having that number there to say they're a follower, which obviously helps, but like those who are like willing to support you by buying your products. Mm-hmm. And we've seen that somewhat with like high ground, how quickly they sell out now versus the scale at which they were at before Hundred Thieves. Mm-hmm. Like they do have fans that are looking to collect every single thing that comes out from the apparel and from high ground and, and stuff. Right. So yeah. uh, just further engaging like an audience and like cross promoting it between like a game, which theoretically could stand entirely separate from hundred thieves as a company in terms mm-hmm. of if, if it seems in steam in like five years, there's nothing to say it has to be branded hundred thieves whatsoever. It could just yeah. be a fire game. And then within yeah. that, there are some elements that link back to it. Like, there's a lot of opportunities for like building fandom. I, I think here, which yeah, yeah, hundred um, percent, is obviously and, crucial. Yeah, and coming and just coming back to the point of, you know, why does Hundred Thieves have the following? It's because people really do see them as, as as cool as the cool kids. Like this is what I was saying before: is content isn't something people are now using it as like a checkbox activity. Like, yeah, we make content, and but it's. People aren't going to care about the people that aren't authentic. Like I said, Nade Shot really did build it and really does have a massive following and has used his personal profile to build a foundation with really good executives, seemingly. Uh-huh. And now they're making the good decisions and now they could really catapult to like actual like elite tier fandom for, for years. Um, yeah, I'm in, I wonder if they do associate the game with the 100T brand like explicitly because it'll always be there like people will just know that it's a 100t game you know what i mean they'll 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 know that this is the one that 100t made um, uh, as long as like they're aware of 100 thieves but say you're just a randy who isn't a randy fuck me if you're a random person random <laughs> steam user jesus christ speaking like a true gamer then if you're some scrub <laughs> some randy scrub um 
and you're not really into esports, you don't really follow it, and you go in Steam and you see like a top ten game in the marketplace right now, and it's yeah. there, it's Hundred Thieves game. If you're not aware of Hundred Thieves, like you yeah, may so not know, but that's appealing. not inherently a bad thing either. This, though. No, it's not. This is why ultimately the game needs to be good. <laughs> that that like, that's it sounds so one. obvious to say, yeah, but it's like the game has to be good first. Like people have to want to play it. If not, it could yeah. just be a massive big face plant and. But you know, at least they've been able to produce all this content, but the end product isn't there. I, I think one part of it is as well, like Battle Royale was the hype for a bit. Mm. But now I don't think there's a clear favourite like <coughs> genre or one you can predict will be the next big thing in like five years. Yeah, yeah. So there's also a bit more pressure to like decide on something they think will be relevant by the time <laughs> it actually releases, whenever that may be, because they're not gonna have and the manpower, can you say that these days? The person power of um, <laughs> as a AAA studio, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, they're, not, they're not going to have that. So they, I don't know. It has to either be a small game, which they can pump out quite quick, like two years, mm-hmm. or they have to think of like a timeless concept. Obviously, it's like tried and true genres like FPSs and stuff. Like It'd be interesting to see if they wanted to try and take on a CSGO and a Valorant, but I don't see, I don't see that being the case. They're nah. competing in both of them, and obviously uh, they're quite high up in the, I guess, the hierarchy of, of teams in Valorant, mm-hmm. even from a popularity standpoint. So yeah, I guess you don't yeah. want to step on any toes there, especially if you're looking to become like a partner of VCT when that mm-hmm. comes around in 2023. I wonder if any developers will have any issues actually with with them, depending on what kind of genre they go into. If they do something that's way too close to Fortnite, for example, I don't know how you'd do that. Or mm. Valorant or COD, would any of them have a problem now that 100 Thieves are also in that arena? Yeah, yeah, it's true. As well. It's true. Like, like, they're how, they're how, trying to own every piece of the pie, seemingly. Yeah, like how would their team, how would their being a team influence the type of game they make? That probably means, yeah, maybe that may, that's a good point. Maybe they'll just stick to single player then. You know what I mean? Like if ah, I don't know, it's yeah. tough. Part part of me thinks like competitions in their DN, the company's DNA at this point. Mm. So you uh, and and we know like competition is good marketing for a game as well. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I feel like they'd maybe, but like also single players can be competitive in that if it's a high score system or certain levels you have to get to, all those yeah. kind of things. You know, like I just hope they don't yeah. do something as basic as what I suggested earlier, like all made up early, where it was like a robber going into the 100 Thieves cash app compound and you have to like steal the CDL mm. trophy and, and they yeah. just pops up out of nowhere and then there's Valorant you know there and you have to like dodge them and stuff like that's a bit too right. on you the nose they, I feel you know what they could do though year seven school project. they could make that multiplayer though and have you, did you ever play oh mate this is such a good idea if anybody at 100 Thieves is listening they need they to will take be, by the way, about two of them right good so they need to pass this on to, to Nade Shot so <laughs> Did you ever play um, Splinter Cell Double Agent multiplayer? Never in my life. Oh my god! It I'm was sorry. Fucking brilliant! It Go was on. so good. So that game is one of my favorite. I, w- I went and replayed it actually, and it's pretty buggy. So I don't know if it, like I think in in the ranking of best ever Splinter Cell games, I don't think it's anywhere near the top to most people. But I loved it. Um, and they had a multiplayer, and it was three on three you were either like a, a like a spy, like an agent, and the whole goal was to be like undercover and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you would start in one part of the map and have to go and attack these bomb sites. And yeah. on the other side, the players like you ended up swapping. On the other side the players had they were they were um they were playing it's first person, isn't it? Yeah, first person. So where you, where you could only see the gun basically. Okay. And yeah. their job was to defend the area. Mm-hmm. the other the spy's job was third person so you could see the person's like body and stuff and you, yeah your job was to sneak in um and destroy the bomb sites and i think the the side with the guns had um they had a they had a, a sensor on so that when a spy got close to them it started to beep and it beeps faster and faster the closer they got okay. but it's really hard to see them because it's dead dark and stuff and Oh mate, it was so good. I, some anybody listening to this needs to go on YouTube and just have a look at Splinter Cell Double Agent multiplayer. They could fully do something like that. They could revamp Double Agent. That would be and, sick. And you start as levels. You start at level one, whereas one, and then it goes up to a hundred. And there's a hundred thieves. We're going to call yeah. them thieves instead of spies. Exactly. Yeah. And there you go. 
Yeah. And now we've just made you at least 500 mil. So, so in, yeah, so instead of so instead of attacking <laughs> bomb sites, they have to go in and steal, I don't know, crown jewels. Nate Shots quiff. <laughs> <laughs> steal something. I still encourages voice box for a bit because it he annoys the hell out of me a lot of the time. Um, <laughs> Courage does. <laughs> yeah, Courage, Courage is funny. No, he's just he's just one of those like real American, massively over enthusiastic <laughs> about everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm a real English, so I'm just like, mate, just calm down a mate, bit. Mate, just shut the fuck up a little bit. Yeah, his YouTube video is like, it's like ear plugs <laughs> in before you go to click anything. It is, it's, it's a madness, you know. But yeah. I, I, one thing I want to emphasize again is how. In esports right now, the the IP holders are the ones that are really raking it in, as well as the players that are getting mm. paid. Like if you look in Valorant, like there are players who are average in CS:GO who are getting like between ten and thirty k a month now. Like they're raking it in, they're doing very fucking well for themselves. Uh, teams, mm. not so much. <laughs> they seem to get the short end of the stick. I was speaking to uh, an executive at an organization last week. While I, while I was walking to the pub, uh, which is just a very weird thing to do, I'm just talking about esports on the way to go meet my mates who want to get slashed. But um, nice. he he was basically like painting the picture of exactly how teams get like fucked in every angle. Effectively, like players benefits uh, benefit, tournament organizers benefit, developers and publishers benefit. Sometimes they're one and the same. To- tournament but- organizers benefit. More Not- more so yeah. than teams. This is how he was painting it. Uh, right, okay. I can tell you afterwards where he. Oh, be, the fact I even said he is compromising a little bit, but like where <laughs> where he works and what he does uh, mm. afterwards, uh, it's it's an interesting point of view. I didn't necessarily agree on all of it, but mm. the way he was he, the, the point he was basically making is like it makes no sense to like want to create a fucking team right now and to try mm. and keep a team alive right now because you just get yeah, shafted yeah. in in every angle. Like you get basically none of the prize pool revenue share is still shite. Like if something happens with a the team, then you get blamed for it. There's just a bunch of stuff. Um, so 100 Thieves are now expanding out of that and saying, no, we want to own some IP as well. Obviously, the, they sold 2 mil. Oh, sorry. They, they got revenue of $2 million in the first month when they sold their like recurring always-on clothing line, which I can't remember what it's called now. It begins with an R, and it's annoying me that it's not coming to me. But High Ground selling out on everything, and they're seemingly like putting collections out more often as well now. Content, mm. they get hundreds of thousands of views and they're bringing in more creators still. I think they just brought in like Vinny Hacker, who's like huge on, on um, TikTok. TikTok. Like like millions upon millions of views there, right? So mm. they're, they're still finding new ways to gain, like uh, access new audiences on the content mm-hmm. front as well. And now, you know, obviously they've got competition, but like being able to own it from the other side and say, look, like <laughs> we're really not reliant on what we do on the competitive side. In fact, yeah, that yeah. could be a lost leader for us just to develop fan engagement because people want to support us and wonder, also to just advertise our brand and the, the you know the sponsors on the jerseys and such. I wonder if they see the esports stuff as marketing. You know, how yeah. you said before, like, and how how publishers see esports, like game publishers <clears throat> see esports as marketing. Um, yeah, that's that's a really good point. Is, marketing is, is for teams like esports is marketing all round. Yeah, yeah. Effectively, like it's not a super serious spot. You've still got like players who are managed by teams. I think it was announced like there was the face Maybe. like swag announcement the other day where he signed to like UTA or some big yeah, agency, yeah, yeah. but within it, it actually said he's managed by Phase Clan, which they just fuck, they've been getting in trouble for anyway. They're not uh, so they're not um, registered as a talent agency oh, right. in yeah, LA yeah. and all this kind of shit. But like, so like it's not a super serious spot where everything's above board and everything is is. Legit and competitive, competitive integrity is placed high above Maybe. anything else. Is wrestling? Maybe and it's that's all the to sell merch and yeah, get eyes yeah. On the sponsors. It's really interesting. I've never actually seen it that way. Maybe that's like the future of esports. You know, because it's so fractured. Like we were saying in, a, in mm-hmm. another video. Like maybe the best option is to just accept that it's it. The sports itself, their, themselves, fucking hell. It's difficult, it's, isn't it, to singular or plural? Um, yeah, like maybe the future is to have a business that you want to promote across games to kind of give your team or give give your brand, sorry, like legitimacy. Yeah, because um, like, how are you making money off of a like competitive operations right now? You get your sponsors, which care about eyeballs outside of competing as well. 
Mm-hmm. Um, revenue shares, revenue shares from if you buy into a league, which is a heavy investment, and good luck getting like twenty mil back in the. <laughs> I don't know. Within yeah. ten years, yeah. good luck yeah. doing that. You know, um, like I think like uh, someone wanted to buy an Overwatch League franchise for like ten mil, but couldn't because more than that was owed on the franchise payment still. And there's a rule <laughs> where like they can't do that. You can't like no. you can't accept an offer that's lower than what you owe because that has to be covered somehow. Right, on yeah. Activision Blizzard's front. So like revenue share and, and everything, it still is, is work to be done there. Prize pool, 90% of it goes to players effectively. Sometimes it's an 80-20 split, but most of the time it's like a 90% yeah. split. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you look at game-specific stuff, whereas in-game items like Rocket League or stickers in CSGO, the players, when it's player-related stuff, they get basically all of it unless really? the team tra- like goes against that and then just gets peppered publicly. Because uh, I, th- I think there was some stuff about that recently, and also like Nip again, the Richard Lewis report <laughs> exposing that Nip just hasn't paid like hundreds of thousands of pounds like it owes for sticker capsules and stuff to players, both former and existing in CS. Right. Well. So like there, they're having to like take what they can to keep keep going. I actually think like it might have been Nip that reasoned with it in Richard's report, where they basically said, um, "Look, like we needed." money somehow and this was for the cancelled major in rio the esl major that didn't go ahead like they did sell some capsules it was it was something along the lines of like look it wasn't technically player stickers (laughs) and we needed the money was in the middle of a pandemic and there wasn't much going Mm -hmm. on so like we needed it and in their contract it states this and this technically wasn't this it was that so therefore we get Mm -hmm. to keep like i don't know if it's a million or whatever, you know, like that's how yeah, desperate yeah. they are for money at this point. But basically, mm-hmm. say all that to say, it's not good to be a team right now and we don't know yeah, when the yeah. fuck it will be. Yeah, you know, I, I, put a, really I put together a list of all the 2021 financial performances of the public organizations. Mm-hmm. Um, like just last week, I published it and it's scary looking at it. It's fucking scary. I'll look, I, I can link it in, in the description below for anyone that's interested, but um, it just paints a really bad picture. So seeing mm. teams be proactive in any way, like Tempo Storm, obviously, are trying to do this with like their own owner, Raynad, which I'm pretty sure a former competitor kind of personality turned founder and businessman, just like Nade Shot, uh, mm. trying stuff new, creating like a card game. Because he came up off of card games, mm-hmm. makes a lot of sense. If we're following that route, Nade Shot will start a shooter because he was big mm. on Gears of War, Halo and COD. Yeah, I'm yeah. tolerant now, you know. But yeah, I, I just applaud any organization that are trying to do something different other than starting a fucking yeah. agency and then like cross selling their players to get to get more money like TSM does and FaZe do. Mm. You know? Like I don't yeah. respect those, but those are actually being innovative, it's sick. Yeah, yeah. Well, like, yeah, that's that is the future, at least for the next 10, 20 years, isn't it? Is diversifying and trying to find different ways of doing things. Uh the the thought or the prospect of um of a team like Hundred Thieves or a or a brand like 100 thieves making a game it is pretty fucking sick like i'm excited to see what they do with it you know watching the hype video with um nade shot and is it john robinson is john robinson the guy that yeah president coo yeah yeah um yeah it's just it's just sick like i'm excited to see what they do with it and it really will be a great opportunity for content i've got a Um, question for you go on what happens if they announce it's going to be a blockchain game uh play to earn Minimum spend, <laughs> minimum spend to play of one thousand pounds. Fucking, yeah. I've, I've gone, I've I'll gone so hype, like nothing else, wasn't it? I've got, I've gone so cold on on blockchain games, man. Like, been reading a, a couple of this is so fucking random. But if anyone watching um, is interested, <laughs> subscribe to a really good newsletter from a company called Every, and they specialize in like specific newsletters. Yeah. Um, I think there's a newsletter called Almanac and one called Napkin Math. I definitely subscribe to both of those. They're really, really good. And they've written a few um, about play-to-earn games and about crypto, like, basically failing in its promise and things like that. Really fucking thought-provoking. Anyway, that's such a sidetrack. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd, mate, if they come out with a play-to-earn game... That's I'll the fucking... only thing I think I can think of right now I'll that would off. immediately turn off 90% of the people that would care. Yeah, they, that'd be stupid if they did that. Just just purely because even if they did it well, I feel like the gaming and esports community just wouldn't like that at all. They'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, yeah. and like, like to be fair though, they could create NFT versions of their new collections and, and introduce them in-game at the same time mm. as they come out 
uh, which is cross promotion there. For even for the people who don't know 100 Thieves, if the new collection comes out in game as well as NFTs, woo. also you could do it without it being NFTs and just have it as a new skin. Yeah. Which That's, is probably the oh, better mate. option. That or is... like pay $5 and you get the new golf country club looking ass um, yeah. collection that we've just put out. You know what I mean? Have it on your character in game. And then mm. also, yeah, um, game. Is five, here's 10% off. Since you bought it in game, is 10% off the actual collection. Go now. You know gamers I mean? yeah 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 that's the thing isn't it gamers have been operating by the principles of scarcity and rareness and fucking you know ownership like unique ownership for decades like you don't need an nft to do that's that why I think that's NFTs why... Are the, they're amazing they're gonna change the world who yeah. needs to eat food when you can have food nfts mate <laughs> i do think nfts are like a revolutionary technology like genuinely but the whole, oh, we're gonna get in, I think there's a reason. There's a reason that gamers don't give a shit about them. It's because a RuneScape player that's you know max level that's got like the rarest item in the game. You don't need that to be an NFT to prove that it's the rarest fucking item in the game. You know, so I know you know these uh, NFT pushes. I feel like are just yeah. I mean they've been slaughtered, haven't they? They really Seem- have. I know we've, we've though, done yeah. a. We've done a video on this. But, well, all of the yeah. profile picture projects and stuff, I think they're ninety nine percent, ninety nine point nine 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 percent bullshit. Uh, oh yeah, entirely. Right. Or, you know, like the good stuff's still out there. Logan Paul's doing some interesting stuff with NFTs at the moment. If you've seen no, the originals, no. and he started a decentralized uh, organization around it. Oh uh, yeah, like ninety nine polar Polaroids, like documenting like certain things. So the first one was of like Beeple with one of his collections. Another one was a, a actual like ape. Like a chimp dressed up like a particular like board ape, <laughs> board ape yacht club ape, and mm-hmm. it's like polarizing, and then it's accessing to this club, blah, 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 and they're going to make decisions based on stuff. So like, there are some interesting things coming out. I don't know how the fuck we've gotten to that from <laughs> be starting a game. But I'm just thinking this is the way. Like, the Me talking yeah. about Logan Paul's NFTs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just you'd never expect that. Um, but uh, yeah, so, so effectively, I think we unanimously agree that, well, we, we're both excited to see what's what, though we know it's mm-hmm. going to be a long way off no matter what it is, because they've just hired yeah, yeah. their first person, which is, if I remember correctly, his name is Pete Hawley. Let me yeah, check yeah. Pete Hawley oh. is chief product officer, who's basically going to lead the, lead the project, former CEO of Telltale Games, which did all like the story-based, like turn kind of based, like narrative-based games, which were pretty fucking sick. I played a couple of those. Mm. Um, he was at Mythical Games and, and back in the day he was vice president of uh, product development at EA so he mm. obviously has a lot of experience not just at one company but um, like several major players within gaming mm-hmm. so that's an, an interesting way of going about it Blancos is a game that I think is it Mythical the last one he was at Mythical created a game called Blancos I see. Blancos released an NFT range or an NFT with Burberry so oh, right. we might we might still get an NFT oh, slash blockchain it. type game. With check it, check his LinkedIn. Thieves. If it says Web three anywhere, then we know gamers lose <laughs> their fucking minds. <laughs> yeah, some of the fucking drivel I'm reading on LinkedIn at the minute is just, and I'm saying that as an app, as as a as a fucking blockchain absolutist, like it will change so much. <clears throat> but Jesus Christ, man! Like we get to see some of the grifters, some of the like... Web three. Well, say that again. We yet to see a lot of stuff be particularly useful yeah. outside of like yeah, yeah, exactly. projects and investment opportunities, I feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like 100 Thieves, though, they did a good job with their, their blockchain shit when they released that commemorative LCS chain. So, Told nobody that it was an NFT. <laughs> yeah, effectively, and just like, this is free. Like, uh, minting it is effectively uh, equivalent to printing two pieces of paper or something yeah, along those yeah. lines. When two it, emails, like, I think it was. Sending some, two yeah, emails. There you or, go. Something. or like just like seeing two pixels of poem and then turning it off. Like it's so economically sound. <laughs> and, uh, econ- economically sound because it's free and also environmentally <coughs> sound, you know? So like mm-hmm. if they wanted to do it, I have faith they could try and make it work, but it's going to hamper the success of it instantly the moment they include any of those yeah. words, you know but i have a, yeah. I have faith like they're going to want to do it the right way because this is going to be the fattest thing they've ever invested in mm. by a long shot because <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah 60 mil is going to at least cost half of that to get this shit fully going i, I feel and then you've got yeah, the marketing afterwards you, so. and and the thing is in like a post fortnight 
um and, but, and like free game era now like you have to keep content fresh all of the time or mm. fans lose interest instantly if you look like halo infinite like that got absolutely peppered because like the second season came late like six months after the first or something like that. you know like they demand shit all the time like each week it seems you need to have a new skin or a new mm. level or a tweak to a gun or yeah. something along those lines, you know. So like it, the the work is not just up front. In fact, yeah. mo- most of it probably comes afterwards. An improvement and keeping it alive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, true. Um, what was I just gonna say? Sorry, mate. No, no. It's, I, I had a thought while you were talking. Steady on. Um, a whole thought. <laughs> did I? Uh, yeah, wait, fuck, it's just gone again. <laughs> oh, mate, it's right there. It's right there. Yeah, but sorry, that's it. Yeah, um, marketing. Would 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 they even spend anything on marketing if they, uh, if they already pay? Up front, isn't it? Yeah, but and With if the building yeah. in public stuff. Yeah, it's and not from. The so they already pay the content makers. They already pay people like Valkyrie and. Uh, courage um so would they necessarily have to spend anything on marketing maybe it's just part of their contract that like yeah we've got this new game so like you know you need to plug it at least somewhat and i think they wouldn't even need to do that because they all seem to have a relatively good relationship with one another probably so Um, and there may be a kickback if like they have a specific specific code or something along those lines like you know fortnite has like the ambassador codes and and stuff right or creator codes i think they call them yeah no harm in doing that for your for who you've got, so who pushes it the most out of you fuckers. Like, we're not paying you to do it, but you will get a kickback from it, you know? Yeah, yeah. there's so many opportunities. I, I think it's way more exciting hundred like learning 100 Thieves making a game rather than hearing, like, oh, Activision Blizzard is developing a new IP or something mm. like because it's just something brand new. Obviously, we've got Dr. Disrespect with Midnight Society. Yeah. Um, where he sold, like, NFTs for, like, Founders Collection, I think it was. You know, mm. some people hate it, some people don't. But like seeing like creator led and like new age company led, um, you know, like developments like this uh, excite me a lot more than just the same old because I, I don't think they're necessarily forced to do what the norms are, mm. and also they have expertise in other areas. So how does that bleed through into into this? Maybe it shows that as a brand new way of rolling a game out or developing a game or building a game. You know. Mm-hmm. Or they could just never get the game at all. They could get stuck in development hell. They could have creative differences among the top leadership there. Mm. And they could waste a lot of money, but they'll learn a lot in the, in the process see. of that, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one thing you reminded me, Dr. Disrespect. That's one thing we haven't really t- spoken about. Maybe Nade Shot saw that and thought, oh, I need to I need to rival him. I need to use You think he feels threatened by Doc? Possibly. I mean, they're kind of, I mean... They are they are similar. I guess they are competitors in a in a way. Um, in 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 that we are all competitors vying for the attention of people, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, yeah, I suppose there's enough room for games from been, both, though, isn't there? Yeah, I suppose. And it has been nature has been running hundred T for a while now, so maybe not. Like, he's not his primary income isn't a streamer, is it anymore? Oh no. So oh, oh. maybe not, and it definitely is for Doctor Disrespect. So maybe I was wrong. Cut yeah, that bit. <laughs> Joking, I'm, I'm definitely leave that shit in. So interested to see where it goes if we're, when if slash when there are major updates. Who knows? Maybe further videos on that shit. I will call it shit because I don't know why do I do that. That's a bad habit. Call everything shit instead of stuff. Yeah, but to people out yeah to people outside of the UK, maybe they'd be like, "What is he saying? It's shit." Yeah, yeah. But people in the UK would be like, "Yeah, he's just talking." Our viewership's like thirty percent UK. Is it thirty yeah, percent? Which surprises me. So, I'll what's our US? Yeah, it didn't show actually. It only showed UK, which is so strange to me. But you just said like thirty percent UK, UK, and didn't show any other demographics. So UK was our biggest one, or not? Can't tell until I see the others. I don't know. It literally, only showed one. It's like it doesn't right. have enough data or something to go on. But it it does, or else it won't be able to work out. It was thirty percent or twenty nine percent or whatever it was. So. I'm strange. not sure. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe we've just got some mad Kazakhstani fans out there who love the bit of cyber athletics. Love that. I'd love to see that when we when we get the data for like different I'll countries. A, Imagine I'll if we haven't. Top. We we may well have fans all over the place. Never I don't know. know. Maybe it's my whole family watching, and they don't class Scunthorpe as like being anything legit, and therefore it's outside <laughs> of the UK. 
It's just like <laughs> something other. It's like shit. Be on, just issue. beyond the wall. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe, maybe it's just me <laughs> mum refreshing videos hundreds of times. But uh, no. Anyway, we're not wasting any more time. Thank you all for watching. I need you to go and. I don't know, stroke it gently, the like button, but really mm. pound the subscription button. I've, we're over two thirds towards the hundred that we need now to get the custom URL. Yeah. And this always happens on YouTube, but our views are way beyond our, our average views are higher than our subscriber count. So we mm. need, I reckon we probably get a lot of people that click on a link on Twitter or LinkedIn, maybe don't log into their YouTube account and just watch the video for a little bit and then go off, which is fine. But if you can go through the app, log in to YouTube, subscribe, that's so much better for us. And Billy, you give a tenner to each of the last 33 subscribers that we need. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe 15. Oh, fucking hell, I'm going to create a create account then, mate. That's boring, yeah. that. Right here, subscribe, motherfuckers. We'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.